What's up, dudes? Back again for another voiceover. Uh, I'm gonna explain what's going on here now as far as the past few weeks have been. Um, first spot here, I'm on a, a flat uh, with some wood and a little bit of grass growing in there. Um, it's, a, it's protected from the north wind uh, and there's a major creek channel on the main lake just outside of this flat. Um, uh, I'm trying to uh, target, isolate targets, isolated targets in here, whether it's wood, uh, little rock piles, um, anything basically that I can visually see I'm throwing to. With them, you know, being on beds right now, it, that's pretty important to do. Um, you want to you wanna fish it methodically too. You want to, you know, maybe even make multiple casts of the same piece of cover over and over and over again. Sometimes they'll be there and you just got to hit the right spot. Um, Anybody knows that, that bed fish is a lot, that it, me it means a lot to hit the right spot. Um, this one here is a, a major uh, creek channel. It's uh, going into spawn. There's a couple spawning flat, different spawning flats on this um, stretch right here. Um, and it's been good to me the past few years. Um, right now, if you've noticed, there's a huge shad spawn going on. Um, your, the shad will follow your, your spinner bait and bang the blades all the way back to the boat. When that's going on, first thing in the morning, you definitely want to throw a spinner bait. Um, the more wind, the better, but you, you, you can't go wrong throwing it really any time uh, until that sun gets high. Shad spawn usually co co uh, correlates with the, the bass spawn, so uh, and a lot of bass are on beds right now. Pay attention to it. You might be able to see a couple of them, too, if you're, you're really looking. Most of the ones you'll catch on the spinnerbait this time of year are good ones, too. Uh, for whatever reason, I guess they're chasing shad. Um, this, I was out with a buddy of mine, and we were fishing a, a main lake flat. Uh, again, it's protected from the north wind, uh, which is really important in the spring. Um, basically, what he's doing is taking his spinnerbait, keeping his rod tip high. You get some grass on it, you pop it loose. Um, and just keep that that thing rolling to the edge of the grass all the way from the inside to the outside the, This fish hit it on the very outside of the edge. I mean he was about five feet from the boat when he hit it It's important too that grass has got that nasty cotton shit on it So you want to keep your your rod tip high and those blades should be barely spitting the top of the the Almost like a top water, but you want your bait to be submerged a couple inches uh, to where the blades are almost riding on the top it's a good fish too. Um, this this next one here is uh, it's the same same type of bank. I mean, it's it's got a, a creek or a, a main river channel right next to the um, to the. It's a little cut um, cove, whatever you want to call it, um, where it's protected from the north wind also. So it, it's a it's a little more protected. And uh, this fish was on an isolated piece of wood. Um, so you, like I said, you really want to pick apart wood. Most of them really love to spawn around wood or uh, any any hard objects that they they can keep predators away from from one or more sides. Um, and if you'll notice, I'm throwing a, a different colored senko here, black and blue. Uh, when the water gets dirty, I I switch to a darker color. Um, and when the the water's clear, then I'll go to more natural colors. Uh, that's important. This fish here was uh, I must have hit its bed and. Um, he hit it the first time and I missed him and then I he, he kind of gave away where he was at so I just kept throwing in there and I think it was like the third or fourth cast after that I finally caught him um, but if you get a bite and you miss him most of the time in the, during the spawn they'll grab the tail of it um, and and just try to get it off their bed they're not necessarily trying to eat it they just want to get it away from it um, so just give them a couple seconds once they're on it and uh, wait for them to, to swallow it and then and then hit them with it. It's just a piece of wood, um, isolated piece of wood next to this this lay down right here and, and or this tree, this overhanging bush and you'll notice you got to get it pretty far back there like I said in the previous voiceover. We got them that time. Sometimes smallmouth too. You'll you'll notice that they'll hit it a few times. It, it's because their mouths are so small. They're trying to get that bait in their mouth. Um, so it almost feel like a bluegill hit um, until you start seeing your lines swim away. Then that's when you want to hit them. Now give them a couple seconds. 
this is the same bank I was on um, a few a few catches ago. Um, like I said, you really you really want to pay attention to to flats that are near deep water. Now it's a little bit later than in this video um, right now. So that was a couple weeks ago. The water is warm. There's been another uh, full moon, um, and these fish are on beds. There's a ton of them on beds. When you can see. Once the water clears up a little bit, you'll be able to see them. I've I, I got a ton of footage of of uh, spawning fish that that I'm sight fishing for that I've caught that I still have to edit, but uh, I'll put that up as soon as I can. But right now is the time. You want to fish slow. You want to m fish methodically. Um, and and some there are still some pre-spawn fish. You can catch them early on a spinner bait for, but most of the day I'm I'm fishing slow and I'm dragging it slow. I've switched baits uh, also now more recently from um, from the Senko to a, a more uh, creature bait, something that's got a little more action. Um, a, a bass's worst enemy during the spring is a bluegill. Um, bluegill try to eat their eggs. They they mess with them the whole time they're on beds. Um, so you want to mimic something that's gonna uh, act act like a bluegill. A creature bait or or a swim bait or or something something that just looks like a bluegill You'll notice too on these bushes. I'll hit the front of them I'll hit the side of them uh, just kind of like when I'm fishing points of grass in the summertime You want to hit every angle you can and this one was way back in the bush They're gonna they're gonna treat it exactly like they would a stump as long as they're protected from certain areas um, or certain uh, Directions then they feel safer. That's that's your target areas that you want to focus on and there's also a, a, a spawning flat uh, 50 yards from here. So most of these fish here um, Are post spawn that are moving back It goes from the main lake all the way back into a pocket um, So this is a good transition area for those fish it's also got rock and steep banks. Um, there's some grass and some stumps. Um, so basically everything that you could possibly look for is on this bank. Um, along with several other banks that are uh, throughout the lake too. Those are the ones you want to target the most. There's an interesting part of this video too, towards the end that uh, I'll show you. That's about making bait changes, um, and it's that's why it's important to have multiple rods on the deck. I'll show you when that gets closer. But uh, it's just another male fish. Um, now some of these fish uh, won't move in, all the way into pockets to spawn. Some of them, if they um, feel comfortable enough out near the main lake, they're, they'll spawn right there. And and a lot of the biggest fish that I've caught throughout uh, the past couple years have been on the main lake. So. Don't don't always rule that out. They're gonna they're gonna spawn a little bit later than the rest of them would because the water on the main lake gets gets cold um, warmer. It takes longer to warm up, so it's colder for longer. Usually, when that water hits 60 degrees, it's a good. There's a good chance that the, they're on beds are getting close to it and especially 60 degrees around a full moon that's a sure bet um, they're a little bit late this year but not by far and you know it, it all depends on length of day and um, moon phase and and at uh, water temperature obviously same thing this was another male there was a cold front that came through just before this and when that happens they'll pull out to the edges of wood or or the second drop will, they'll come out further from under the bank uh, until it warms up and then they'll they'll move back out again um, this is a, again the same bank that I was on a couple um, a couple shots ago the same thing here there's also rock next to deep water there's wood um, overhanging trees uh, plenty of shad spawn on this bank um, and another another key piece of information that you can do is when you're doing when you're fishing in the spring like this, you can turn your electronics off. I I, I have two up front. I'll keep my left one on my maps that has my waypoints, and my right one I'll turn off completely. I, you you don't need that additional pinging when there's no need for it. You, you're not looking for anything off the bank. 
So just turn them off. It's it's a you want to be as stealthy as possible. Which you'll notice when you start sight fishing, or if you've ever sight fished, you know that any little movement can throw them off completely. This was another male. You'll catch a lot of males, um, especially within the next, the last week up until you know a couple weeks from then, and then you'll you'll start catching a lot more females too once they're done doing their thing. Back to the same bank before, um, leading into a, a spawning flat, um, and again a lot of them will spawn right out on the main lake. So. You just got to be patient. Spring isn't about hitting spot to spot to spot to spot. It's taking your time, being methodical, um, and really focusing on on what they're doing. I mean, you're going to have to, they're not in a feeding mood most of the time. You're going to have to aggravate them into biting or just get it on that sweet spot of the bed, um, which when you can't see, it's really hard to do. So you just got to visualize that there's a bed there. And then, you know, work it methodically and then move on to the next piece of cover and work that methodically um, until you finally get a sign of what kind of structure they're on. And then you can go looking for that. Um, it makes it a little bit easier and, and less time consuming if, if you can figure it out early um, and then you have something to go off of the rest of the day. This was the same thing. It's a big female and it was on on wood, isolated piece of wood, which... Um, You've heard me say it a million times, this time of year, wood is extremely important. Uh, I probably have every stump in this lake marked, um, especially last year when the water was low, you could see them. That's the best time that you want to mark them because now in the spring when the water's high, you can come back and fish the ones you visually can't see. Um, and that's why I keep my maps on all the time. I know uh, my waypoints that are marked. Now, if you, if you watch this one, I throw literally to the same exact spot that this fish is sitting um, with this spinnerbait two, three times. And then I just had a feeling and I picked up my um, Senko. I flipped that in there and he bites it the first time I flip it in there. Um, and it's you can see it's the same spot that I casted that spinnerbait to twice. So, it, you know, that proves that it's not always about... Um, just getting it in front of the fish it also depends on the mood of the fish and if they're they want to chase or if if they just want it to land in their face um and this one just happened to land in his face so he ate it that's really important you know you got to have multiple rods so you can do that now right now i only have five five rods on the deck because i'm dialed in i got i you know i i know exactly what baits i need and and what they're going to eat this time of year um it'll get a little more difficult as it progresses but Right now is the time to do it. Um, you'll catch numbers, you'll catch a lot of fish, and you'll catch big fish. So if you haven't been out yet, you probably should get out now. Um, you know, get some good cold cold weather gear, and and uh, you know if it's cold out or rainy or whatever, just just get out there and catch some fish because you'll really see how many fish live in this lake this time of year. And it, it goes for any any of this information goes for any lake across the world. I mean, you can follow the same general concepts that I'm that I'm showing you here and basically catch fish anywhere. It's an addictive game, but uh, it can be rewarding too. You know, if we caught fish all the time, it wouldn't be as fun. Good big female. All right, guys. Well, I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will have a sight fishing video coming up soon. Um, I'll get to it as soon as I can. Until then, you guys have a good weekend.